Hmm, how best to describe this? Don't eat the snow. You tend to throw up after you eat snow. No eating the snow. Come on. So today, it's uh, February 21st, 2021. Last Monday, President's Day, uh, I took a drive down to Stamford, Vermont. For the last year or so, I've been looking for um, a project ATV. It's been hard to find anything with COVID and everybody kind of getting outside and, um, socially distancing, uh, price of used ATVs has really gone up. Uh, so it took me a while to find something to work on, um, but success. Ended up traveling through a snowstorm. It was snowing like heavy concrete as well. So, hmm, how best to describe this? Ta-da! Well, let me uncover it and show you what we're working on here. Ta-da! What we have here is a 1989 Moto 4 350cc. So very similar to the other Moto 4s that we work on. We have um, two 1986 200cc Moto 4s. I think 1985 was the first year that Yamaha uh, made a four-wheel ATV. Before that, it was all three-wheelers, the YTM series. Um, we also have the one behind me. That's an 88. Um, YFM 225 and plastics are missing right now. I'll get that back on. And then they stepped up to a bigger one, the 350 CC. So within this one, comparisons to the other Moto 4s, much beefier exhaust. This is considerably thicker. It's a bigger head than the 200s and the 225s. Uh, still mechanical braking systems, front and rear, drums up front. And a single, uh, a single pot cable pull in the back. Physical size, very, from what I can tell so far, very similar to the 225. As a comparison, this is the 225 head and the exhaust. High-low range is down here on the motor. No pull start on the 225. On the 350, I've already taken it off. There is a oil cooler up front. Behind here is the oil filter. Here is a pull start. So you do have a pull start back up to your battery. The high-low range has been moved up top here. So what we have found so far um, with the flywheel on here, I put a wrench on it. I put, crank the motor forward. You get a hard mechanical stop. You back it up, you get a hard stop again. It does roll freely, so I don't think the issue is in the drive line. If you hit the start button, the motor will spin until it hits that mechanical clunk. My suspicion, so far unconfirmed, but uh, I think I may actually have to take this motor out um, and split the case to see what's going on. Many of the the nuts and bolts have been replaced. Um, is, this was obviously Yamaha blue. And this was taken off and painted. All of the, the rubber on the fairings has had bolts replaced. The racks have been repainted kind of with like a, a Rhino Tough Liner it would appear front one as well this is aftermarket the fellow said he added this 12 volt charger kind of nice for your gps or your cell phone front tires have been done on this one the fairing stay is still intact 
that's a piece that doesn't exist on the 225. Um, so the fairings will actually get caught in the tires and I had to take the ru lower rubber off, which means your boots get covered in mud. So it's nice to see that piece is intact there. Up under here, you can see the oil cooler. It looks like a bolt broken off on the back of that side of the oil cooler there. Not a real big deal. This has been replaced here. This is the, um, the Y pull, I'll call it, for the front brakes. So in talking to the fella um, that I purchased this off of, he was telling me a year ago he put a new battery in. He did the brakes. He had the hunt high and low for the, uh, that Y pull for the front brakes I was just showing. He has uh, new front tires on it. He gave me a new spark plug and a new air filter. As he was saying, um, he had it parked in the yard and he went to move it into the garage uh, in, in the fall and just started it up or wasn't able to start it up. It just at that point, something had given way. Don't know why. Before I came down to look at the ATV, somebody else came by. They spent a little time in the garage uh, opening it up for a quick look. From what I can tell from bolts that are loose, it looks like they opened up around the flywheel. Probably did some of the same thing. Turned the motor over until they heard that clunk. So, and at that point decided that uh, it's a motor pull. You know, I don't know. Uh, but as you can see, I've moved the other ATVs out from under here. It's just a little big to work on in the shed because I'm going to have to work on both sides of the motor and I, and I think pull the motor out. So I need more space. The challenge is... It's still February and it's cold and it's windy and it's 20 degrees and fingers on metal. Yucky. So I got to figure this out how to work on this. But uh, to get started, I think we're going to pull the racks off. We're going to pull the plastics off and we might have to start soaking some bolts and some, some easy out or some PB blaster and see where we go. The idea for this one is it's a, a gift from my brother-in-law. I don't need any more ATVs. Oh, I didn't say that. I need more ATVs. I'd love to do a, a, a Honda 400EX at some point. So his birthday is coming up. And the hope is that we'll be able to uh, pull this together, find what's wrong, fix it up, and uh, stage it up for him as a, as a birthday present. And maybe do a, a surprise reveal that it's his birthday present um, on YouTube. So the, the story of that is... Uh, um, he t we tend to release the videos and he tends to watch them at work on break. Be kind of fun if we could fix this up and stage it. And when he watches the video at work on break, that's when he finds out that this is uh, this is for him. So if we're successful, you'll see this part of the video. If we're not successful, uh, I don't know. You might just get a beer instead. So, alrighty, I think it's time to crack into this thing and see if we can make it a birthday present. <music> So getting the cowl off was a bit of a pain. On the 225, the speedometer reset that I have is snapped off. So in this case, I had to feed this one through the cowl. And there just isn't enough space to do that. You gotta bend this out. So I'm gonna do some kind of a, uh, a hole drill and enlarge this just a hair so it can slip on easier. Now this is the add-on, this is the 12 volt charger. And I wanted to get a shot of this. There we go. Unplugging it, this went to, it looks like a, uh, oh, see if I can clean this off a little bit, see what that was. I'm gonna go with, oh boy, I guess I don't really know what colors those are until I get this off. Looks like a green red. Now we can feed up the cowl. Put my lid back on so I'm not just inhaling fumes. 
So as I took the handlebars off, I had to take the bars off to get that cowl off so that I can get the front plastics off, ultimately so I can get the rack off. I still have to disengage the high-low, then I can get the front plastics off, then I can get the tank off, and then we can start to see what's going on underneath here. As I've taken the bars out, I've put the clamps for the bars back in where they came out. They're not all quite the same, I don't think. So I've just found that instead of a bag of parts, I just put these back in. It takes a little, an extra moment putting it back together, um, but I just like doing it this way. We have the back plastics off, we have the front plastics off, we've lifted off the tank, disengaged so we can see the motor here, keep on our inspection. So what next? Well, I think one thing we're going to want to do is to take the exhaust off, brush it, check it for holes, anything of that nature. It's, it's seen some wear really kind of stripped out on some of these allen bolts we'll try and break those out and of course there's always a project to try and get the exhaust off the head on something old to take this motor out this is your speedo cable this will as you loosen it this should lift out on this motor down in here this is the high low reverse range i don't know if i would take that out or feed this all the way out take off your engine uh, stabilization bracket i'll call it up here obviously undo your spark plug take your carb off with these bolts these look to be 10 millimeter 10 millimeter bolts take the two of those off i would suspect the way i would do this would be to drop this foot peg off and free the motor up to come out this way this assumes that the exhaust would be able to to uh, separate so i get that clearance so let's look at the other side. When I look at this side, we've already taken apart the oil cooler. We'd also have to disengage the oil cooler up here. Number of breather hoses. There's a ground hooked up in here. This wire, actually off the top of my head, I don't know what that one is for. And then of course, there's the drive and this could be a bit of a pain I believe loosen up all these I can open this out ultimately my understanding is that I would have to drop the rear end disconnect the shock drop this down to pull the drive shaft um, out and away I'd like to avoid doing that if I don't have to so I think the plan of attack is going to be from this side. Behind here should be the clutch. There we go. Yes, this clutch. Can I take this whole side off and inspect and see if that clunk is somewhere in and around the clutch area? If so, then I don't have to pull the motor. Well, I don't know that, but maybe I can repair without. So I think I'm going to work to open up these bolts. I'm going to drop this off to get some clearance. And up here, this will have to come out. This is part of, well, it looks like part of the coolant system it is a, looks like an oil line from one side of the case to the other side of the case. But it is cold out here. Doing the 225 in the shed, I only had to work on one side. I had a little heater in there, there wasn't any wind. Uh, but out here today, even with the sunlight, there's a wind. It's really tough on the fingers working on bare metal. So I got to think about this and, and be smart about this. In an effort to keep from mixing up bolts and losing things, I'm putting them in baggies. I just don't have the space to leave everything all laid out. So this should help with that scenario. I do want to show you something. Here's the oil filter. 
This has got metal shavings all over the place. Something was rubbing, something broke. Um, but while it was rubbing, that is all metal. So we're gonna find something in there, that's, that's for sure. Well, I just split open around the clutch. Still plenty of oil in there, interestingly. I thought all the oil was out because I had drained it out around the filter, but still some sitting in the bottom. I just pulled off the clutch cover. Here's the Speedo cable. And I am a little excited. That's a blown up clutch. That clutch right there centrifugal plate snapped right off one of the springs is down in here looking at this we may have a blown up clutch and if it's a blown up clutch we don't have to take the motor out Destroyed the gasket. We will need to do another gasket. But so far, there's metal shards down there. Goopy, goopy stuff. But that, that would do it. I'm going to see if I can hand turn the motor over to know for sure. Still clunk. Reverse it backwards. Clunk. All right, so it's not just a blown up clutch. We do have a blown up clutch and that's gonna have to be replaced, but there is still something going clunk down in the center of the motor. Oh, I thought we were going to get away easy there. That would have been so nice. Hmm. Adding to the mystery, I just found two locking washers in the sludge down here in the bottom. They could have come. They could have come from the other side of the case. They were the oil. So, again, I'm getting suspicious that we're going to have to crack this case because I'm not seeing anything on this side responsible for that mechanical hit hmm look at those chunks well that rubber grommet would appear to have come from here somewhere sitting behind in there Oh, yuck. I can't get this guy. Ooh. Ooh. See the divot right there in that basket? I think we just learned something. Look at that. I wouldn't have noticed that. Look at that. All right. There's a washer on the back there. I'm going to go put this in the shed where it's going to stay clean. So I've moved around the other side here. Been breaking out the bolts that cover the drive mechanism because I do believe that to take this motor out, I've got to disengage the rear end. So if, if this doesn't give I'll have to change tactics and open up the back end. Did get the engine stabilizing top mount off here. Have not worked on the exhaust yet. I'm going to hit that with some PB Blaster. Let that sit. Probably hit a few more of these bolts also with PB Blaster. Let them sit. The head bolts because we're coming after that anyway. And my PB Blaster is freezing up. 
on the shade side of this motor. Look, look at that. It's frozen. Uh. I was heading for the car. <laughs> All right, we'll call that intermission. Now I gotta get back to uh, trying to find the problem on this uh, on this 350. But snowing again, not too bad for tubing. Kind of fun. You know, I just realized this, but she made the car look like a Disney character. All right, I'm gonna bring you in here. What I've just done is I've taken the fairing stay off so I could get at the exhaust. Fortunately, the uh, the nuts uh, that, or that came right off the studs holding the exhaust on and it separated easily from the back here. So that actually was a, a non-event pulling that together. So moving to the back now, I've gotta drop the rear drive shaft. So I've pulled the rear wheel I've taken the bolts out around this cover that um, behind here I'm expecting to find a worm gear and I've removed the collar um, that holds the boot on here. This boot is torn. I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm going to take this stud out, which tough to see, but holds the, the axle in place for a, a pivot point, or excuse me, the drive shaft in place for a pivot point. So next we're going to do that. As you can see, I've suspended the rear end here. Um, uh, so as I do that, the other thing I've got to do is the bottom of the shock and it's hard to see. It's hard to see, but the bottom of the shock is a pin. It's held on, um, by a cotter pin. So I got to pull the cotter pin and then just do a little wiggle here and I should be able to drop the shock off. But before I drop the shock, I'm going to loosen up this axle nut. So that's where we'll stop for now. We've taken the swing arm posts, I'll call them studs out, that hold it uh, up to the subframe here. One side, the other side. I dropped the um, skid plate to be able to get at the lower part of the shock. Interestingly, that was held on with a cotter pin. A little bit of pain to get out, um, but now that that's loose, the rear end is loose. The idea now being, that we will be able to separate the rear end from the drive shaft here. And you can see it's already starting to separate. I am anticipating under here, I will find two bolts. And it looks like I'm gonna be correct because I see one bolt, I'm expecting another one. And when those two bolts are loose, I believe this cover will come out. I'll have access to the worm gear. And then the motor is free from the drive shaft and we are one step closer to pulling this whole thing out. So we can get it on the bench, pop the top off, split the case and find out what is keeping this thing from spinning. But for now, I'm going to call it a night, park it there. Turn into a nice night, it's only about 39 degrees, so not too bad for working out here. Got enough light to keep going. Uh, but that's it, it's, uh, it's dinner time. So we'll keep digging into this on another day. Yeah, that's enough.